Ellen, if you would have told me 10 weeks ago that I'd be standing in front of you with no notes, talking about something that I'd yet to prepare for in front of a group of strangers, I probably would have laughed at you. I don't think that I look back in t 10 weeks ago and see myself doing this. I never could have dreamed of having the confidence to not look at notes, and even though most of the time it's by complete chance, there was one time where I'd like lost my note cards, and I couldn't see below this point, and it was like, oh, I guess they're gone, because I wasn't going to look down, because God forbid you get docked down not looking at your audience. <laughs> so when I first joined this class, Venditti had asked us to write down a quote that we live by. And I struggled to think of one, and I quickly scrawled something down thinking, no, oh, why not? And it's amazing how, looking back now, how it actually really applied. That quote that I wrote down was, everything will be OK in the end. If it's not OK, it's not the end. And I'm not sure who it's by, because as much as you try to research it, it doesn't exist. But I think for everything that I've been through in this class, this really applies. My portfolio is a testament to the fact that not all things have to be perfect the entire time. In fact, the things that are dirty and sometimes make us depressed are some, often the things that we're most proud of in the end once we succeed. This portfolio, including the outlines, the interviews, and the periodic thoughts, is myself in a book. And I intend to show you all three things and explain to you how I've grown as a person. So the first uh, speech that I want to share with you is a speech that I did about an abortion survivor in Indiana, and I'm sure you guys all remember it, because I nearly teared up in front of all of you, so that was really funny. But what this class has taught me beyond learning just things about how to do outlines is how to self-reflect on things that have affected us most. When I had done this report, I was going through a kind of a quiet time in my life and I was in a lot of self-reflection and was thinking about a very rough time in my life that kind of made me feel as though I understood Gianna's story. I know I'd never had an abortion, I don't want you to get the wrong idea, but when I was 16 years old I was a junior in high school, I had friends who didn't like me, a family who wouldn't talk to me, I had grades that even the worst of students would be ashamed of and I felt no reason that my life should continue. I was on 167 going north towards Puyallup, uh, going around a bend that overlooks Bonnie Lake and downtown Sumner. <clears throat> I decided at that moment that it was done. My life was not going to get any better, and I pull, pulled the wheel right and said, what will be, will be. And just that moment, because it was pouring down rain that night, I remember very specifically my wipers were going incredibly fast. My car hydroplaned into a puddle, and I veered left into the other lane. No traffic was there, so nobody was hurt. I ended up pulling over and just crying profusely, thinking, how bad is my life that ending it is the only option? And so in the reason I bring it up is that in researching Gianna's situation, I so much of it was realizing that certain things are given to us, much like the speech class, not to be taken over, but to overcome them and to realize that we are a lot stronger than we give ourselves credit for, no matter how much we think otherwise. The other speech that I had done that I thought was very close to my heart was when I went to see my brother's AA seminar, where he spoke for a couple of hours about what it meant to be an alcoholic, the family member of an alcoholic, and it touched me really deeply because there's things that I recognized in myself that I never even processed before. This class has done worlds for me when it comes to understanding who I am and what it means to be human. And that sometimes the things that make us who we are are the things we should be proud of, not the things I should hide. It, it's funny that I mention any of these things because I haven't talked to anybody about them aside from very close friends for many years. And for many reasons, I'm ashamed of that because I haven't given myself a chance to heal. Other than that, there's interviews. On a more happy note, I got to meet a lot of people that I didn't, that I didn't know, and I have to say I hated every part of it. <laughs> I don't like talking to new people. I think talking to new people is really hard, and especially when you have to ask them questions. And if you ever want just to see the look on a woman's face in total shock, go up to her and be like, "What's your opinion on abortion?" <laughs> I'm just trying to get grapes to the grocery store. Why are you asking me? Like they get really uncomfortable, and so I 
try to challenge that and I decided to ask people point blank, what's your opinion on drunk driving? What's your opinion on this? And it, the look on their face was enough just to kind of make me giggle and get my information at the same time. <coughs> I also learned that things in life are hard for a reason, that talking to people sometimes can be rewarding, but that through coming through the fact that I hate talking to people, it made me more sure of myself, more confident in the way that I carried myself to the point where I really couldn't care less if I have to ask some old lady if her, her, her opinions are different than mine because I'm more comfortable with that. The third thing that I want to share with you in my portfolio <coughs> are my periodic thoughts. Now, until last night, I didn't quite realize that our periodic thoughts had to be about speech class and so I revamped mine to make them fit that. Now, it's my thumb tab would just come up here. So I didn't write little notes like everyone else. I wrote little paragraphs. And the second week we were in this class, I wrote a very honest reflection of how I felt about this class. <laughs> Excuse my language. That's not, it's not horrible. <laughs> I am so damn overwhelmed. My mind is racing with homework and GPA and tests. I never seem to have a dull moment or get any time to think other than on Sundays when I watch the news. Who have I become? I take some time to relax, but in the afternoon, I'm right back at it. Homework. God, this is awful. I was thinking back to when I was younger, and I yearned for these stupid responsibilities. How foolish I was to think back, finding myself wanting more on my plate. Right now, all I want is a cool drink and somewhere warm. I guess I'm learning more and more this whole education thing is something we take one day at a time. So, I edited some of that because maybe, maybe it wasn't the best. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, basically, I was incredibly overwhelmed. I walked into this class and I was like, I have got this on lock, I don't have to worry, and then you get to week two and you're like, oh god, okay, well, I'm just going to sit down now and try to breathe. <laughs> so, the, the last thought that I had was one that I had written last night, and I'm, as I was thinking about what it meant to be in this class, I'm presenting my portfolio tomorrow, and then after that, I'm done with this damn class forever. By the way, I like the word damn. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, I never have to give another speech with citations, interviews, or any other torture tool that I'm pretty sure Venditti just invented on his own. Though I'm grateful for the experiences, I'm more grateful for the sleep and sanity that I will be receiving along with my passing grade. If you're a student who is about to take this class, you have two options. You can either run like hell, or you can give this class a chance. I suggest the latter. And everything that I've done in this class, I have worked my butt off to do my outlines correctly, to do my interviews correctly, and to do my periodic thoughts correctly. And out of that, I've realized that there's so much more to this class that we don't say every day. There's things that you learn about yourself, your strengths, your weaknesses, who you are, and what you're going to be. I never expected to walk into this class and get everything I have. So I leave you with a qu two quotes, in fact, that I am very close to my heart. And one is by, by a man named John Ellery, and the other one is by Winston Churchill, and it's actually on one of Finditti's posters on his wall. The first is, be fearful of mediocrity. And I suggest that we never settle for what we think is comfortable, what we think is easy, just because we don't have time or we don't want to do it. And I also want to leave you with, never, never, never in your life, if you ever have a moment where you're just, you don't want to go on, you either better hit a puddle and hide your plane, just don't give up. Thank you.